Kevin Budrum. I'm born and bred in Peter Marisburg and I still continue to be here. My primary schooling is in various different primary uh, government primary schools that I spent at before matriculating at Heather Secondary School. After matriculating, I decided to study electronics engineering, which I did for a while, uh, but then changed career paths because I needed to, uh, to work and study at the same time. We had some financial constraints that prevented me from studying further. I did work part-time to try and um, subsidize my studies of electronics, uh, but it changed the career path when I decided to apply for a permanent job and do part-time studies. I then applied to Everyday Cables. I started off as a data capture clerk in the creditors department and started studying a national diploma in financial, corporate and financial accounting. I passed that. I majored in accounting and law. Thereafter, I went on to do some post um, degree and post grad studies, also general management studies, including at the, the program for management development at the University of Cape Town. Uh, I passed those quite successfully. And uh, as I was growing academically, I was also getting opportunities to grow within the finance department, going from uh, a data capture clerk to a creditors clerk, and then onto a, uh, into the costing sphere where I went to a costing role. I became a cost analyst before becoming a cost accountant and then the financial controller which i occupied for a number of years the financial controller role led me to when we introduced uh, sap uh, commonly known as sap in our area to become a sap specialist especially on the financial and costing sides i attended the uh, the sap graduate school in santon uh, to become a sap specialist as well and from there, my career has taken a part where I also do analyst roles within the workplace. The analyst roles include um, just complementing other aspects of the business, not just finance, and to look at a more general management role within the business. I continue to be here and continue to grow and just to sustain the company of Peter Marisburg Everyday Cables proudly. Whilst doing electronics engineering, I was uh, working part-time in plastic rice mills. Um, it was quite difficult because we used to go for lectures from 8 to 2, and then I would go in from 6 to 6 on a night shift to actually just sustain myself and do things together. So I was in the packaging department learning about the rice industry. So I've uh, started, as I mentioned, growing up in the finance department and very much rooted in the finance department. Started off as a data capture clerk, but then moved on to different positions within the finance department to currently where I am heading up still the entire finance department at the Peter's Primarisburg operation. But as well as doing that, I'm doing a lot of uh, business analyst roles and also look after in terms of some of the general management roles. I think we, we all seek to see some kind of growth, uh, continuous growth and continuous improvement to just be better than where we were before. And just to see that we are continuously improving like that, whether it be the small um, Haikaku steps as they call it, the gradual improvements or the, the major ones that's come along. But if we can just try and better ourselves every day, I think I want to do that for myself and see that being done for the company, that we can be better than we were yesterday. So when, what is the one accomplishment that makes you the proudest? Um, I think it was very early in my career while I was studying electronics engineering. Um, it was a subsidized course that it was. I mentioned some financial constraints we were going through earlier in my studies. And while we were there, they decided that we should not just be um, subsidized for our studies, but open up a, a repair center uh, as part of electronics there. And while we were there, um, I remember the one time I was asked to repair a, a television set and it belonged to an old lady who was actually a pensioner. And it was a small thing that had happened where it just needed a fuse to be repaired and some soldering to be retacked, And probably cost just a couple of rand. But when it came to charging her, uh, the owner of the business then asked to charge like a phenomenal amount. So it's like a couple of hundreds of rands. And I, I, I said to him, we can't do this. I, he says to me, yes, we can. And I said, no, we can't do this. This is not right. He says, um, he told me, you don't understand business. This might be your only customer for the month. How are you going to pay your overheads? 
And I said to him, uh, I, I will struggle, but I will do it ethically. And I told him he didn't understand ethics. Uh, we got into quite a debate about that. And I ended up speaking to my parents about it to say that I can't continue doing this anymore. I'd rather stop this career if this is what it's going to mean. And I walked away from that. And uh, walking away meant um, I was able to be offered another job in the cable industry. And I've stayed there for that while. So that, that's a bit of standing up for what I believed was right at the time. For me, it might seem insignificant to others, but the fact that I stood by it and it meant that another door had opened for me into another career is truly an accomplishment. And I think that has held me in good stead over the years because finances, you have to keep but your integrity and your ethics quite high there. So, yes. I must say during uh, my schooling career, we were, we were blessed with really great teachers. Um, I was, I don't know whether you call it fortunate or unfortunate to be in the same class with the guy who finished first in the country that year. So we were always um, getting the strong teachers that were coming through. Um, but I was the kind of one who would uh, want to be on the sports field for most of the day and try to get your homework done early in the morning, sometimes during the registration. But there was a teacher there who during registration, as long as you were present in the class, he'd make us put our heads down on the desk while we were trying to get our homework updated. And he would tell us to envision where we see ourselves in um, one year, five years, 10 years time. And then to actually, while we're still in high school, to see the kind of house that we want, to have the pictures in our mind. And he asked us to always um, have dreams and see how much we realize those dreams. And uh, that, with that advice, I first thought he was, uh, I thought there's something wrong with him. I just want to get my homework done. But I realized how important that is to actually have this and to chase after something and for you to see yourself somewhere whether it be like the impossible things or not, that you are there and you, what are you doing to actually follow and attain those, that you can realize those dreams. They don't just become dreams, but become a reality. So that was great advice that he gave me and I continue to do it up to now. This must have been in the business area. Um, we face many challenges as a business. Um, a lot of retrenchments, which uh, I've been part of the team that's involved in that and deciding um, on the retrenchments. But we we sat with teams for on many occasions and it's very difficult to sit um, like we are not even in a meeting like this, but for someone directly across the table and speak to them that they are possibly going to be retrenched. And um, we took the plunge on more than one occasion to say that uh, we asked our company executive and leadership and our CEO to just to trust in us and that we will deliver on the promise that we would and almost uh, putting our own jobs in the line to say that we would deliver. It meant us going in and really going back to back to basics. Um, we called it like a renaissance almost where we went through and we saw that we could deliver. Uh, we went in, it meant us operating machines, we did that, but we had to get the entire workforce behind us to share a common vision and to say that we can become profitable again we're not going to close this company down, we're going to deliver. And this has really been one of the uh, great businesses in Pirmelsburg. We don't want to see it close. And yeah, we, we overcame. It was a lot of hard work, but that was a real thing. But it's, it meant bringing a team along. We couldn't do it by ourselves and to get everybody on the journey with us. That was really great. I think they say that you must uh, be the example that you want to see in others. So I must be like motivated and not downloading like that. So I tend to be the one who almost always goes around um, smiling or creating a smile in others and uh, almost being like how they call you, um, how can I put this like um, the eternal optimist, like up to your neck in hot water, but still whistling. So you, you know, tend to make others smile all the time. And if you give them a reason to smile, um, you can go beyond the tears, let them see beyond the, those dark clouds that there's something better there. And just say to them, just look at the good in things, don't be uh, despondent all the time. Because once you start to get despondent, and if especially if you're leading a team and you're despondent, they naturally will follow that. But if they see there's, that you are looking for, forward hopefully and you're leading from the front, then they tend to follow you and go by your lead. So that helps me a lot. Um, I do a lot of reading. I like a lot of uh, inspirational stories or books, preferably the shorter ones. Uh, but I must say I've got uh, many leaders around me now who just I can turn to give me advice or when I look through and see what they are achieving, it gives me a hope to say um, this looks almost impossible, but look where they are now and look how they've turned this around. So I, I love success stories. I love being a part of them. 
and just putting my hand to the plow with them just to see I, it looks like totally impossible how did you do this and where they see nothing they start off with nothing and what they achieved there after the before and after images really really inspire me i do also read a few books where i really get inspired currently reading one which is called the crushing which shows that how to turn pressure into power so that's quite nice my wife just got that for me so those kind of reads help me to go along as well I think if you look at it, uh, a lot of people are very, like I said, despondent. If you look at the growth, uh, economic growth percentage, it's um, around the 1% mark, it's been like that. But then I, instead of looking, I think for the next five years, I look back at what they said maybe five years ago, where we'd be now, and it looked just as bleak. But I see some of the accomplishments. I like to, I think I'm typically like that if I read the newspaper, I also like to start off with the sports pages because it tells me more about people's accomplishments rather than starting with the failures. And I'd like to believe that in the next five years, we've seen so much that's this, that is possible for us as a, a province. Uh, the diversity we have really has uh, so many opportunities. I've just been on a camp during this weekend um, out in Nottingham, which is in the Natal Midlands. And just to look there how a, a farmer is using his land and he sees that, yes, he's doing farming, but there's a need to build more uh, wedding venues. It's great that more people are getting married and they need these venues, but he's turned that into such a beautiful wedding venue. And to think that they're using this and he's using people to do that kind of thing shows me. Um, he's just cut a road in there for us to go like on a men's camp over the weekend. And just for me to be in the midst of that just, and to speak to some of the guys who are out there just doing things that we don't really see. So I'm much believing um, at work, we've got a thing called uh, Gemba. Gemba is just Japanese for uh, go and see. And a lot of us can sit behind our desk and read um, online or in the newspapers how bleak things might be. But when we go and see, you suddenly see how much growth and potential there is out there, how many people are really trying to make a difference. And if we just add to that positively, then we can all make a difference. And I believe we can um, change that uh, economic growth from just being 0.8% like it was a couple of years ago to the 1.1% is, it is now to really greater figures. Um, I'm seeing from our side personally, our holding company comes and looks at the port and sees the challenges we have there. Um, one of the leaders from there is in the country during this week and he's speaking to our local government here to say what can they do to help to grow this. So I believe when we start to see this kind of investment coming through and the others that will come through as well, I certainly am positive about it. I believe that we have, uh, we're have we going to have a much better five years to come than probably the last five or even 10 years that we've had. Yes. Um, again, it's come back from a school teacher. I never quite understood this and I had to learn this a little later, but he always told us, um, hang loose, but stay vibrantly alive. And um, I went and I searched that a couple of years later after seeing that and I saw that um, there's a, an author who gave them as a test and they gave five different options and the first four she said were quite okay to go through like that but she said for those of you who really want to choose that fifth option of hanging loose but staying vibrantly alive that's a real challenge and I thought oh well if my teacher asked me to do this and someone's saying this is the real challenge and I want that challenge so I started to say yes okay hang loose but stay vibrantly alive and yeah that alive is just saying yes we we can do it kind of mentality yes